What do you think Plymouth called this color in 1966? Yellow. There are three different trim levels offered in the newly redesigned 1966 Plymouth Belvedere. The entry level car was the stripped down Belvedere 1 and the top version was the luxurious Satellite, but today we're spending some time with a mid-range Belvedere 2. The Belvedere 2 had a less than menacing 225 slant 6 for its base power plant. It was a very reliable and economical plant, but one that was only rated at about 145 horsepower. And although the 225 could spin up a fairly respectable 215 foot-pounds of torque, that's not really enough to qualify as a muscle car, even on its best day. But our car is no angle banger six. Uh, this one runs like a four-letter word, and that four-letter word is H-E-M-I. At first glance, the pale soft yellow paint and light gold interior might remind you more of grandmother's sofa and curtains than a drag strip terror. But this Belvedere II was built with the goods, namely a 426 Hemi and a four-speed manual gearbox for all day drag strip fun. We tend to think of these old Hemi cars as being straight line performers, but Plymouth was actually pretty proud of the way these things drove. They actually ran an ad that said, announcing the 426 Hemi Belvedere, now what this country needs is a drag strip with a few hairpin turns. The Belvedere II is a unibody construction car, which means it's got no removable frame like other muscle cars of the day. And this made the structure very rigid and lighter than a body on frame design. These cars were also known for excellent handling characteristics, which were credited to the unique front and rear suspension designs. The front suspension utilizes a torsion bar system rather than coil springs, uh, and they called it the torsion air system, although no air was actually used. The torsion bar is a long, heavy bar that attached to the front subframe near the firewall and extended forward to the lower control arm. And as the car went over bumps, the motion of the control arm would twist the torsion bar, which would resist and try to keep the car level. A stabilizer bar also helped keep these things flat in the turns, and the lack of the coil spring meant there was a little more space for bigger brakes and better suspension geometry up front. And it worked quite well, as Chrysler used these things from 1957 all the way up to 1989 in some form or another. The rear suspension was a leaf spring design, but the axle assembly wasn't centered in the arc of the spring. Chrysler engineers moved the axle ahead of the center line, offsetting the spring length front to rear, which provided better control of the spring in hard starts and stops and reduced wheel hop in the high power Hemi cars. The 426 Street Hemi engine was new for 1966, and it was rated at 425 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. It was the first go-around at making a daily driver version of the brutal race Hemi, and although it was more mild-mannered, it was still a beast of an engine. The Hemi refers to the hemispherical shape of the combustion chamber, which accommodated large valve sizes and delivered excellent airflow characteristics and the power was enhanced by a high 10 to 1 compression ratio, performance carburation, a maximized camshaft, solid valve lifters, and a low restriction exhaust. These Hemi Belvedere twos were capable of low 13s at 105 plus in the quarter in stock trim, and quicker and faster with better tires, headers, and other go-fast goodies. Ours has an MSD ignition upgrade installed and appears otherwise stock, but without tearing it down, you don't really know if it's got other secrets inside the engine. Mid-60 styling was generally pretty conservative, but there are some neat details on this car. You check out that rounded emblem on the quarter panel in that long spear. 
On this side, it's got the same thing, except that badge is also the gas cap. Very cool. Today, we look at colors like this soft yellow as being unusual, but times were different in the mid 60s. Car colors often followed clothing and home fashions, and 1966 was a time when avocado refrigerators and gold wallpaper were the norm, so this soft yellow and gold Plymouth was right on. And if you think about it, today we see lots of stainless black and white in the home and silver black and white cars on the street, but Plymouth didn't even offer black or white on the 1966 Belvedere. A yellow Hemi car would most certainly be a sleeper, that is, a car that was far faster than it looked, and one that blended in with traffic. Maybe today's equivalent would be a white Dodge Challenger Hellcat with the badges removed and running boring wheels. This car is like a giant custard treat with a yummy Hemi center. We hope you like this episode of Muscle Car of the Week. Thanks for watching, and if you want to share your comments, go to our Facebook page or use our YouTube channel, and we've got more cool cars from the Brothers Collection next time on Muscle Car of the Week. Mmm, Hemi.